What is going on YouTube? I'm Lamont at large. Today I am walking through Holloran Park on the west side of Cleveland in the state of Ohio and I'm going to talk about the disappearance of Beverly Potts. She was a 10 year old girl that went missing and has been missing now for over 70 years. This is a case that has plagued the city of Cleveland since her disappearance in 1951. Let's go back to August 24th, 1951. We're on the west side of Cleveland, a working class neighborhood. Now, even though we had television at that time, if you had a TV in your home, you were considered pretty well off. You weren't rich and you were doing pretty good. It was a almost a social status thing to have a television set. And if you didn't have a television set, you oftentimes hung out at your friend's house who did. If your friend didn't have a television and neither did you, well, you got to come up with more imaginative things to do and preoccupy your time with. So on that day, you had a traveling showcase that came to this park. Basically, it was a flatbed trailer that was parked right in the back of this park right here. And basically, you had high school kids from different high schools all around the surrounding Cleveland area and they would sing and dance and uh, do whatever kind of variety acts that they did and that was a big thing then because not a lot of people had television so if your family doesn't have a lot of uh, in uh, indiscretionary income to you know go to the movies hey this is cheap and free entertainment and on that uh, early evening on that date Beverly Potts and her friend Patsy Swing, who was nine years old at the time, Beverly Potts was 10, they came out here to watch uh, you know, the, the people dance and sing different songs and what have you. Now they got here around 7 p.m. and this park was absolutely crowded. There could have been literally maybe 2,000 people here. and. They had their bicycles with them and they said, uh, you know, it's going to be very difficult to have our bicycles and navigate through the crowd. So let's go back to our houses and leave our bicycles and we'll come back here. That's what they did. So they left around uh, 8 p.m. or so. They go to their house, drop their bicycles off to come back. About a quarter to nine, uh, Patsy tells Beverly, hey, it's time to leave. It's getting late. The sun's going down. Uh, and Beverly says, hey, my... My mom said that I could stay here until the end of the show, which was scheduled to end at 930. And that was the last time that Patsy seen her friend. Patsy goes home and Beverly's not seen. She never shows up back home. Her mom and dad called the police. Police send out a couple cars, go looking out for her. Nothing. A couple days later, it's all over the news, all over the radio. And there's no sign of Beverly. Now, originally, when the detective started questioning people around the area, this park at that time, it was still a rough place to hang out at night because a lot of these trees would cover up the street lights. So you had a lot of vagrants in this area and they would come to this park and sleep. So the detectives interviewed those vagrants. They didn't see anything. And they started interviewing neighbors, people around the block and what have you. And there was a kid that said that after 9.30 when the show ended, that he seen Beverly walking in this direction towards her house. But he was all the way over there. So he's about a good, I uh, say 100, 150 yards away. So the detectives say, well, how do you know that was Beverly? I mean, you're so far away. What are you, I mean, do you have Superman vision? And he said, no, Beverly, she had like a weird way of walking with her toes pointed out where she would kind of walk like with this duck walk. So she walked just like that. So I definitely knew that was her. And there was another person who said that they seen Beverly talking to a couple of guys that were sitting in a 1936, 1937 Dodge Coupe that was running on the street right there. And so... For the next few days, the days turned into a few weeks. A few weeks turned into a few months. And sadly, those few months 
have turned to over 70 years that she has last been seen. Now, we're gonna get into a little bit about uh, possible suspects and what have you. But before we do that, I'm gonna take a quick walk uh, through her neighborhood. This is Lynette Street. This is where Beverly Potts lived and she lived in that house right there. And that's where she was supposed to come home after the showcase event, which she never showed up at. I mean, this seems like a fairly okay neighborhood and you imagine back in those days it would be you know the same which way and the park is only not even barely two blocks down the street so we got one more stop to make to conclude this vlog I want to go over with you guys really quickly about some possible suspects in the disappearance of Beverly Potts and also likely some hoaxes. You be the judge, you decide what's a hoax and what's not. In 1955, a man by the name of Harvey Lee Rush had told some police officers in California that he was responsible for the murder of Beverly Potts. They go to talk to him. And he's like, yeah, I murdered Beverly Potts in 1952. Well, there's a problem. Uh, the murder occurred in 1951. Come to find out, the moron just wanted a free ride back home to Ohio, and he was too broke to pay for a bus ticket. So you go ahead and fast forward a little bit to a 1980 newspaper article where former detectives on this case, James Fierst and Robert Shankland claimed that in 1974, an attorney had came into their office and told them that he had a client who had a brother who told him that he had murdered Beverly Potts. Uh, he was a known sex offender and he lived in that area at the time. He went into some further detail of the crime and the detectives felt that he was telling the truth because supposedly he had given them some uh, knowledge of the crime to where they felt maybe this guy is telling the truth but at the end of the day that was simply a, a hunch on their part and they truly did not have any evidence to go ahead and uh, do any anything even indict uh, the man. In 1988, a former carnival worker by the name of William Henry Redmond was indicted on a 1951 Pennsylvania murder of Jane Marie Altoff. Of course, you have another creep, another uh, sex offender, child molester. And he was in that area of the country at the time of her disappearance. However, when they pressed him with that, he denied any kind of wrongdoing. And of course, again, you have no evidence. You have no case. We also go to 2000. And in 2000, a newspaper reporter by the name of Brent Larkin had received an anonymous letter from a man stating that he was the person that was responsible for murdering her he said that he would turn himself in and make his identity known on the 50th year anniversary of her disappearance which would have been on August 24, 2001 however he sent one more final letter stating that due to declining health or whatever excuse he used that he would not be able to uh, give out his identity and of course, you have a very odd story. In 1994, supposedly, somebody was rehabbing a house and they found a letter under the carpet that was written by a housewife who supposedly had pointed the finger at her husband and claimed that she saw her husband disposing of Beverly Potts' body in a furnace 
when detectives interviewed the lady, she just said, oh, I wrote that letter. I was just, I wanted that letter to be found because I was fighting with my husband or whatever ridiculous kind of nonsense. So you got some people playing games about a very serious subject and you got some other, you know, likely suspects, but who knows at the end of the day who's telling the truth and who's lying. But uh, as I'm recording this, story uh it'll be just about a little past 70 years and uh, this is the grave of beverly's parents robert and elizabeth potts uh, elizabeth died about five years after her daughter's disappearance and you know a lot of people say it was from a broken heart and she couldn't just stand and bear the thought that her daughter was possibly dead and even though her body was never recovered a stone was made in memory of Beverly Rose Potts so her stone even though there's no body here lies at the foot of her parents also uh, Beverly's older sister Anita uh, died in uh, 2006 so the whole family died without ever knowing the truth of what happened to their daughter or their sister if anybody has any information on the disappearance of Beverly Potts please give the Cleveland Police Department a call that's 216-623-5000 216-623-5000. I'm Lamont at large. I will see you guys on the next vlog. Have a good day. Peace out.